Welcome back to Smart Garden, fellow gardeners. Today we're diving deep into one of nature's most undervalued allies, the humble earthworm. If you've been faithfully composting, adding organic matter and still wondering why your soil isn't crawling with these incredible creatures, you're about to discover the missing piece that changes everything. The secret isn't just in what you're adding to your soil, it's in understanding what earthworms truly crave, and how ancient civilizations mastered the art of creating irresistible worm habitats without even trying. Let's address the elephant in the garden room. You've been told that compost is the holy grail of earthworm attraction, and while it's certainly beneficial, it's not the complete picture. Traditional composting creates a feast for worms, but it doesn't necessarily create the complex ecosystem they need to thrive year-round. Many gardeners find themselves frustrated when their carefully crafted compost piles attract some worms, but their actual garden beds remain relatively worm-free despite regular organic matter additions. The real limiting factor isn't just food, it's habitat complexity. Earthworms need more than decomposing organic matter. They require specific moisture levels, temperature stability, proper pH ranges, and most importantly, a structured soil environment that provides both food and shelter throughout their life cycle. Different earthworm species have varying preferences too. Surface-dwelling species like the red wiggler thrive in compost piles, while deep-burrowing nightcrawlers prefer stable, structured soil with consistent moisture levels several inches below the surface. This is where we need a paradigm shift. Instead of simply feeding worms and hoping they'll stick around, what if we created an environment so appealing that earthworms actively migrate to our gardens and establish permanent colonies? What if we stopped thinking about worm attraction as a one-size-fits-all approach and started considering the diverse needs of different earthworm species that each contribute unique benefits to our soil ecosystem? Ancient agricultural societies unknowingly mastered earthworm attraction through practices that modern science is only now beginning to understand. These civilizations didn't have access to bagged compost or synthetic fertilizers, yet they maintained incredibly fertile soils that supported dense populations for centuries. The secret lay in their holistic approach to soil management, treating earth as a living, breathing organism rather than an inert, growing medium. Archaeological evidence from ancient Mesopotamian and Egyptian agricultural sites reveals consistent patterns of biochar incorporation, strategic crop residue management, and the use of specific clay and mineral amendments. These farmers regularly burned agricultural waste in controlled conditions creating what we now call biochar, a stable form of carbon that serves as both a worm attractant and a long-term soil conditioner. The porous structure of biochar provides countless microscopic homes for beneficial microorganisms while retaining moisture and nutrients that earthworms find irresistible. Traditional Japanese farmers practiced a technique called bokashi, which involved fermenting organic matter with beneficial microorganisms before soil incorporation. This process created a food source that earthworms couldn't resist while simultaneously improving soil structure and microbial diversity. Similarly, indigenous American agricultural practices included the strategic placement of fish remains and wood ash in planting areas, creating nutrient-rich zones that naturally attracted earthworm populations. The forgotten wisdom in these practices lies in understanding that soil fertility isn't just about adding nutrients. It's about creating an environment where beneficial organisms, including earthworms, want to live and reproduce. These ancient farmers intuitively understood that healthy soil is alive, and living soil naturally attracts and sustains earthworm populations that enhance fertility in perpetual cycles. Now, let's translate this ancient wisdom into practical, modern techniques that will transform your garden into a worm paradise. The cornerstone technique I call the Worm Feast Trench combines several ancient principles into one powerful method that consistently attracts earthworms within weeks of implementation. Start by creating trenches approximately 8 inches deep and 6 inches wide throughout your garden beds, spacing them about 3 feet apart. The key is layering specific materials in a precise sequence that mimics the natural decomposition patterns earthworms have evolved to follow. 
Begin with a 2-inch layer of coarse organic matter like small twigs, corn stalks, or thick plant stems. This creates air pockets and drainage while providing structure for the decomposition process. Next, add a thin layer of biochar if available or finely crushed charcoal from hardwood sources. This acts as both a moisture regulator and a surface area multiplier for beneficial microorganisms. Follow this with alternating layers of nitrogen-rich materials like coffee grounds or fresh grass clippings and carbon-rich materials like shredded leaves or paper. The crucial difference from traditional composting is the addition of clay-rich soil or bentonite clay between layers, which provides the mineral content that earthworms require for their gizzard function and creates the stable structure they prefer for tunneling. The final layer consists of a mixture of aged manure and finely ground eggshells or bone meal, providing both immediate nutrition and the calcium carbonate that earthworms need for reproduction. Cover the entire trench with a thick mulch layer of straw or leaves, creating the dark, moist environment that earthworms find irresistible while protecting the decomposing materials from temperature extremes. Strategic watering plays a crucial role in this process, but it's not just about keeping things moist. Earthworms are incredibly sensitive to water quality and prefer slightly acidic to neutral pH levels. If your tap water is heavily chlorinated or has high mineral content, consider collecting rainwater or allowing tap water to sit for 24 hours before watering your worm trenches. The goal is consistent moisture without waterlogging. Think of the dampness of a wrung-out sponge rather than a saturated mess. The transformation that occurs when earthworms establish thriving populations in your garden extends far beyond what's visible on the surface. As earthworms tunnel through soil, they're essentially creating a sophisticated irrigation and aeration system that reaches depths no human tool can match effectively. Their burrows can extend several feet underground, creating channels that allow water to penetrate deeply during heavy rains, while providing drainage that prevents waterlogging during wet periods. So, the digestive process of earthworms, you know, produces castings that contain 5 times more nitrogen, 7 times more phosphorus, and 11 times more potassium than the surrounding soil. But hey, the benefits go beyond just simple nutrient concentration. Worm castings contain beneficial bacteria and enzymes that create a slow-release fertilizer effect. This provides plants with steady nutrition over extended periods, while simultaneously improving the soil's ability to hold nutrients against leaching. And here's something interesting. Root system development in worm-rich soils shows remarkable improvements in both density and depth. It's quite fascinating, really. Plant roots readily follow earthworm tunnels accessing nutrients and water in soil zones they might never reach otherwise. This enhanced root development translates directly into stronger, more resilient plants that can better withstand drought, disease, and pest pressures. Research consistently shows that plants growing in earthworm-rich soils demonstrate increased resistance to fungal diseases and recover more quickly from environmental stresses. The water retention capacity of soils with established earthworm populations can increase by up to 40% compared to similar soils without significant worm activity. This means less frequent watering requirements, better drought tolerance, and more stable soil moisture levels throughout growing seasons. The improved soil structure created by earthworm activity also reduces compaction, making cultivation easier and providing better growing conditions for beneficial soil microorganisms. Perhaps most importantly, earthworm-rich soils become increasingly self-sustaining over time. As worm populations establish and grow, they continue improving soil conditions that attract even more earthworms creating positive feedback loops that reduce the need for external inputs while increasing garden productivity year after year. The journey to creating a thriving earthworm ecosystem in your garden is more than just a gardening technique, it's an investment in the long-term health and productivity of your soil that will pay dividends for years to come. As you implement these ancient wisdom techniques in your modern garden, you're participating in a tradition of sustainable agriculture that has sustained human civilization for millennia. Start small with one or two worm feast trenches in different areas of your garden and observe the changes over the coming months. You'll likely notice the first earthworms appearing within two to three weeks, but the full transformation of your soil ecosystem can take a full growing season to establish. 
Document your progress with photos and notes about plant performance, soil texture changes, and the ease of working your soil as earthworm populations develop. The beauty of this approach lies in its adaptability to different garden sizes, climates, and growing situations. Whether you're working with a small urban plot or acres of rural landscape, these principles can be scaled and modified to work within your specific circumstances. The key is patience, observation, and willingness to work with natural processes rather than against them. Consider this the beginning of your journey toward creating a regenerative garden ecosystem that becomes more productive and self-sustaining with each passing season. Your future self, and your plants, will thank you for the investment you make in soil life today. Don't forget to subscribe to Smart Garden for more innovative gardening techniques that blend ancient wisdom with modern understanding. Share this guide with fellow gardeners who are ready to transform their soil into a living ecosystem, and let us know in the comments below how these techniques work in your garden. Your experiences and questions help build our community of soil stewards who are committed to growing food and flowers in harmony with nature's own design. Together, we're not just growing better gardens, we're cultivating a more sustainable future, one earthworm at a time.